this is to kind of pair up the equations uh, to eliminate a variable. Uh, and then that way, you have two equations that are in two variables. And then we can do what we've been doing. So what I see right now, looking at number 75, what do y'all see that lends itself to elimination? The Z, right? Because uh, we've got positive 5Z in the first one, and we have negative 5Z in the second two. So what we're going to do is we are going to pair the first two together and do the elimination process. Okay, so we're going to pair 4x plus 4y plus 5z is equal to negative 5. We're going to pair that with the second one and do elimination. But we're also going to pair it with the third one. So I'm going to go ahead and write um, both pairings before I start doing my work. It's kind of like with the substitution where... Uh, we manipulate one of the equations, see if we can plug it into the other ones to get it down to two. All right? So this is set up perfectly for elimination. All we have to do is add the two equations. So when we do that for the first one, we get negative 2x plus 6y. The z's cancel, and that is equal to negative 30. Let's do the elimination for the second pair. Again. It's set up perfectly. We don't have to do anything to it. So when we add them together, we get just 1x. Uh, we get 1 positive y, and that's equal to negative 5. Okay, so if you're somebody who likes to write down steps and you want to write this down like in your notes somewhere or something, um, step one is to uh, pair... Um, Pair up the equations and set up two eliminations. And eliminate the same variable. Okay, that's another key. And eliminate the same variable for each. So as long as you eliminate the same variable for each one, you end up with two new equations that are a direct result of what we started with um, in two variables. Now we can do elimination with those two equations. Okay, so step two is uh, do elimination with the resulting equations. Yes, I'm going to do elimination with those. Now, it's not set up for straightforward elimination. Okay, we're going to have to uh, multiply one or both of these equations in order for us to do the elimination. Um, so, what would be the easiest way to set this up for elimination? If this is what we have. Multiply the bottom one by. positive 2 since the first one has a coefficient of negative 2. I'm going to multiply that whole thing by positive 2. So we get positive 2x plus 2y is equal to negative 10. Add for elimination. The x's eliminate. We get 8y. Negative 30 plus negative 10 is negative 40. So when we solve for y by dividing by 8, we get negative 5. Then we've got to find x and z. Well, it's very easy to find x if we use this equation right here. x plus y equals negative 5. Well, if y is negative 5, what does that say x is? 0. Okay. Um, x plus y, which is already negative 5, is equal to negative 5, then x had to be 0. 
It's always nice when one of them is zero because it makes the calculations a little bit easier. Uh, and then to find z, I need to plug zero for x, negative five for y into one of the original equations. The bottom one? Yeah, we could do that. I like the first one because we don't have any negatives, but we can do the bottom one. We can do the bottom one. Uh, negative 3 times x, uh, 0, <laughs> minus 3 times y, negative 5, minus 5z equals 0. So that goes away. Negative 3 times negative 5, positive 15. Now, you got an option when you're solving this. For me personally, I'm going to move the z so that it's not negative anymore. I'm going to add the z to the other side and then divide by 5 so z is Three. So our solution, 0, negative 5, positive 3. Here's an example of where we did not find the variables in order, or in alphabetical order. We found y first, but remember, y comes second. So 0, negative 5, positive 3. And again, it's an equation. You could plug that into either one of those first two to check and make sure that that is the correct answer. You want to? Yep. All right. You got negative what? Okay. Let's look at 85. Okay. 85 is not set up quite as nicely as the one we just did. Okay. We're going to have to do a little bit more work with this one. So I'm just going to take a second. I'm going to look at my equations before I decide what I'm going to pair up. Okay. Um, obviously, the Z's don't really match up very nicely. Um, the first two I could probably put together for Z. Um, but is there one variable where they all kind of have a common multiple? So X. X. Yeah, we got 6, 4, and 2. So I'm going to pair these up so that I can eliminate my X's. Um, doesn't matter how you pair them up. You can do the first and second and the first and third, or you can do the first and second and the second and the third. Um, I'm probably, let's see here, I'm probably going to do, I'm going to do the first and the third, okay, because um, I only have to multiply one of the equations if I pair the first and the third. And then uh, I'm going to pair the second and the third. Because again, I only have to multiply one, one of the equations if I pair the second and the third. Uh, I'm trying to figure the most efficient use of space here. I guess I'll go right down here. Um, second and the third. All right, so looking at my first elimination, if I'm trying to eliminate x, what do I need to multiply? Do I need to multiply the first one? Mm -mm. Not if I'm trying to eliminate x. I need to multiply the second one by what? Negative 3. Okay, I need to multiply by negative 3 because right now x has the same signs. So I've got to change that sign right there. All right, so I didn't touch the first equation. The second equation, when we multiply by negative 3, is positive 6x plus 6y minus 15z is equal to positive 48. I cannot stress enough to you guys, and I think y'all have been doing pretty good with this, but you must be careful with your signs and with your multiplication. Okay. Don't try and rush through these too much because one little tiny mistake will throw the entire problem off. Okay. So my x's do eliminate. Negative 5y plus 6y gives us a positive 1y. Positive 6z plus negative 15z. Uh, it's like subtraction, so that's negative 9z. And that is equal to 18. Negative 30 plus 48 is 18. 
All right. So for the second pairing, what do we need to do? Which equation, first or second, do we need to multiply? Second by what? Positive 2. Exactly. These already have opposite signs, so that's nice. We don't have to worry about changing any signs here. So again, the first equation goes untouched here. The second one, multiplying by positive 2, gives us negative 4x minus 4y plus 10z is equal to negative 32. Our x's eliminate, 4 plus negative 4 is 0, 6y plus negative 4y is positive 2y. Uh, then we've got plus 12z is equal to negative 24. Now, really at this step, we've got a little bit of a choice. Okay, now if I tell you to do it by elimination, um, then really we, we should keep going with the elimination idea, but could we use one of our other uh, methods at this point? We could do substitution because this first resulting equation has just a 1y, so that's easily solvable for y. We can plug that into the other equation and solve it pretty easily. Okay, so I'm going to give you the choice right here whether you prefer elimination or whether you prefer substitution. For some reason, I don't know, I just, I like substitution better um, as a personal preference. Um, but if you want to do elimination at this step, you can. I'm going to do it with substitution. So I'm going to add the 9z, and I'm going to plug that into the other equation. 2 times, instead of y, 9z plus 18 plus 12z is equal to negative 24. Distribute the 2. <clears throat> 18. I don't know why my z turned into an x. Do not write that down. 18z plus 36 plus 12z is equal to negative 24. Combine those z's on the right side. 18 plus 12 is 30. Uh, move the 36. So negative 24 minus 36 is negative 60. So when we divide by 30, we get z is negative 2. It's very easy to solve for y now because we've got y equals 9 times z, which is now negative 2. So that's negative 18 plus 18, which is 0. And then, let's see here, which equation do I want to use to solve for x? I think I'm going to use the middle one just because, again, I like to avoid the negatives. So 4 times x, which is what we're looking for, plus 6 times y, which is 0, plus 2 times z, which is negative 2, that's equal to 8. So that goes away. 4x minus 4 is equal to 8, add the 4, 4x is equal to 12, x is equal to 3. So 3, 0, negative 2 is our solution. Okay. So I did this one this way to, to show you that you can kind of mix and match uh, these methods particularly when you're uh, doing three variables. It doesn't really work for two variables. You're either doing one method or the other. Um, but with the three variables, uh, you can you kind of mix and match once you get to the two equations and two variables. If you want to switch methods, if, it, if it's reasonable, you can. Um, or if you prefer elimination over substitution, then stick with the elimination right there. It, it may have been a quicker process than that. Okay, it's really just whichever one you are more comfortable with, with operating with.